Hello everyone and hello. Hello everyone. <laughs> um welcome back to another Dream Lens episode. In this episode, we will be building an exhibit for the Cape Cobra. Um I do have I do not have the egg. I have 3 cobra eggs. However, I'm only going to be using one since these are mainly solitary creatures. They're a pretty poisonous species of cobra. They're native to South Africa. And yeah, I just did a whole bunch of research on them. Um, they're very dangerous to humans and probably to other animals too because they're one of the most venomous snakes in the world, especially in Africa. Um, if threatened, this snake is likely to stand its ground and form its hood and just kind of like try to warn you off and it's not like... Yeah. Um, it's not going to like... Eh. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, it comes in a variety of colors from black to like a yellow beige to speckled. Like they can be speckled with like different colors in them intermingled and all that. They can also be a golden color. The Cape Cobra and the Black Mamba account for the majority of fatal snake bites in South Africa. Its venom is a neurotoxin that is life-threatening. It causes weakness and affects breathing within half an hour. People bitten by the snake require hospitalization and a strong anti-venom. The snakes are found in Cape provinces and extends into northwest southern Botswana and Nam Namibia? Namibia. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> it prefers shrubland and arid savanna and deserts. So I have a stack of sand for its exhibit. It tends to live in burrows. And the burrows it tends to live in are ro rodent burrows. Abandoned termite mounds and occasionally rock crevices. The rock crevices are more if they're in an arid climate. Their preferred diet is rodents and birds, but they have been known to eat other snakes, frogs, and lizards. Its average lifespan is 12 to 20 years, and it tends to be solitary. It tends to be alone. They reproduce in September through October and will lay 8 to 20 eggs on average. Baby snakes are called snakelets and they are born, like when they hatch, they are ready to survive and be off on their own. The eggs are laid between December and January in a warm, wet location. These snakes control, control prey populations and are important in their natural habitat to prevent overpopulation of prey. So they are very important snakes, it's just you do not want to cross paths with one. So, <laughs> let's go find the perfect place for the snake exhibit. So I kind of want to keep the venomous snakes and the non-venomous snakes a little bit separated. Just to help tell the difference. Um, I'm going to need to cut away some of this overgrowth here. So these are our non-venomous snakes. So I'm going to have like probably a few other snake exhibits on this side. Probably even further down the path a little bit. However, hi! I need to heal Madam Rosalind and Slur <laughs> Sir Slitherton. I forgot I named them that. Um, okay, so I think that our snakes should be maybe over here. Okay, let's clear the area of the trees. It's raining. For like sec a second. It was raining for like a second. <sighs> Just clearing out this area. Okay, so there's the fox exhibit. So yeah, our venomous snakes will be over here. Since it's just gonna be one snake, and since the snakes in the Mo Creatures mod mod tend to grow pretty large, they're gonna have a pretty average sized exhibit. Not as big as the um, red fox, but around probably the size of the rock snakes. I should probably eat. So yeah, rock snakes and foxes. I'm just going to continue clearing this area a little bit more. Uh, 
Ah, so close. Such a tall tree. Oh my god, this tree is huge. There we go. I think this is a decent size for the exhibit. So similar to how this exhibit is, I'm going to have it be where you can, you know, look in. The rest of it will be enclosed. I don't know how I'm going to do the roof yet, but I don't, I don't know if I want a sloped roof like I have here. But yeah, I want it to be at least two, four, six, eight, at least ten blocks on the side with the glass and at least two, four, six, at least, so I want it to be at least 8 by 10 for the interior, because that looks about perfect for Sir Slytherton. So that's about the size we're going to make it. I still have to finish these fences, my gosh. But yes, many ideas are had. I'm just going to put a torch there. Okay, inside we go. Let's head to sleep and then we can start building. Okay. I'm probably not gonna hatch all of my cobras because that would be a lot of cobras, at least not at first. But I don't know, I kind of want, like, this area over there and along this way over here to be kind of like Snake Central, where all the snake exhibits will be. And they'll just be separated based on if they're venomous or not. I have to build up, like, at least three blocks. Wow. So I didn't want to go down for the um, for the spruce wood, but it wanted to go down for the oak. Cool. Okay. But yeah, I think it would be really fun to have like a little snake section, snake corridor or something. Oh, that gave me an idea. So we have like the more dangerous snakes will be in here. So, I mean, the rock snakes will of course stay in their exhibits because it's their exhibits. But you know, however, the more dangerous snakes will be in like highly enclosed exhibits. Like, only the keeper can go in there to feed them and such. And then, like. Of course, the other snake exhibits, nobody can go in either. However, they won't be as highly fortified. If that makes sense. But, like, it could be, like, a cute little nature trail. You could just go along, look at all the snake exhibits. I don't know. We'll see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight, nine, and ten. So that's ten, and then by eight. But I do want it to have some depth, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's so right about here. Let me remove this tree. There we go. exhibit will look really nice once I'm done. But I want the majority of this exhibit to be sand. 
mainly because so all the pictures that I've seen of them like they're on sand so the majority of the exhibit will be sand there will be some grass here and there but at least 50% of the exhibit will be sand. And then of course you want a little bit of water, you know, so that way they have all they need to be able to thrive. Like they have plentiful water in case that they need I don't know, the water for like drinking or bathing or whatever. I honestly don't know if they get most of their water from eating prey or if they have to drink the water like other animals do. Because I know there's some animals that get most of their water from prey and other animals get most of their water from drinking. I shall return. I have to go answer the door. Let me just finish this up real quickly. Okay, I shall return. Never mind. Somebody else is answering the door. Okay. Amber's grumbly. <laughs> She's a very protective dog and thinks she needs to protect us when she doesn't. Oh, hush. Yeah. Okay. Two, three, four. I think I'm going to do it four high. Ember! Okay, five high, but four high there. Ember, calm down. It's okay. It's just Dad or Melissa. Or it might be Mom, too. Who knows? Ember! She really likes to growl, but to be fair, she doesn't know who it is because she's, we're upstairs and the door is downstairs, so, and she's just kind of hiding <laughs> under the desk by my foot, being a super growly little puppy. I don't know, she's one of the most friendliest dogs that I have met personally. And then <laughs> she hears a noise in the house and she runs around. She's all bark and no bite, though, to be honest. <sighs> like, she will run up. If somebody walks through the door, she will run up and start barking. Especially if she doesn't know them, then she won't stop barking, but she won't bite or anything. Or at least she hasn't bitten anyone, which is a good thing. But yeah, she's just a super protective little girl. Okay, I go get some water, right? Oh, that actually worked. <laughs> And now there's other dogs barking. There we go. Okay, we got the little water pit thing done. Okay, let's put this away. Let's gently tuck the cobra away. Okay. I think I need this, and I need to make the path. I might want to add water here. I might do that. Just a little bit of water here. Lots of wind blowing. 
Okay. So we've got that. Now we just need the walls. I don't know. I kind of want like a side view too of the exhibit. So I might put here the side view. The side view won't be too big. And I'm going to have a, somewhere in the exhibit, I'm going to have like a little burrow. And we won't be able to look into the burrow because, you know, that's just mainly for the snake to hide from prying eyes. And so that way it can, you know, not have to have people watching it all the time. I have to figure out where I want to put the burrow, though. Maybe right here? I don't know if the 2x2 two two will let it fit. I could always do it a little bit bigger. Just a nice small little burrow. From also what I was reading, oh, there's a tiger nearby. From also what I was re reading, um, they don't tend to move around a lot. They tend to, you know, just stay still, not waste their energy. They, t they like to conserve their energy. Oh, it's turning night. Let's head home. I'm probably going to cover up this puddle, to be honest. Just so nobody falls in or anything. Or I might fill in that puddle and just have the entire puddle be a pond. And then maybe put a few fish in there once I catch them. Oh, also, I put up, I put down the berry bushes and such. And I like how I did it. Alright, let's head to bed. Also, lightning struck the house at one point and caused my house to be set on fire, so I had to fix that. That was on the second floor. And that was when I was putting the bushes down. <laughs> I was like, why? So yeah, that was eventful. Okay, I'm going to fill in that water area. Hi, Phoenix. I, can't, I, I have to finish their exhibit with leaves. I really do. So we've kind of got the burrow. Which will be away from prying eyes. Falls down into the pond. Kind of fill in this area right here. Ooh, I want to save the root. <gasps> no, I killed the root! Because it glitched a little bit with the water. No! I don't think the water likes me very much. Okay, so we've got that. That looks good. Okay. Oh, this looks nice. Okay. Might want to add some sand down here, but yeah. Let's swim out. There we go. I think that looks nice because it's and then if we add like coral and such down there I think it would look really cool Oop. 
But yeah, I might make it so you can't necessarily jump in. I don't know. I don't know. I might put like a little hidden area down here. So that way, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll stop talking. Let's just get to work. <laughs> okay. Uh, I kind of like this large cobblestone. So that's what we're going to use. The huge cobblestone tiles. Yeah, I think that'll look good for the six of it. I was also looking, so while I was um, doing research on the Cape Cobra, I also came across a cobra called the Forest Cobra, so we might also do that as one of the cobra exhibits. It's a little viewing area, you won't be able to view from there. So I think right here would be a good viewing area. I would have to put a path there, but yeah, I think it would be a good viewing area right there. And then on this side, a viewing area. Just like a tiny one. Or actually, the one on the other side should be tinier. And then... Oop, hold on. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. So you can come in here and you can look around... Okay. And then over here will be a larger viewing area. I have to get more glass. This will be fun. Oh, I think that would look cool. Okay. I do want to add a little bit more sand. But where, I have no clue, so we could just do that maybe. Or actually, this will be the entrance for the zookeepers. And then this will be a viewing area, and over here will be a viewing area. I think it'll look really cool, especially once we add um, some plants that'll go in the grass. I might add some limestone down here. we go. Maybe also some sand. There we go. And one right here. I think that looks nice. Ember, it's just a car. Yeah, I know. Alrighty, and then... Right there would be good. Okay, yes, we definitely need more glass. I'm gonna really quickly do this and then that. Yeah, I think that would be really good for viewing the snake. It probably would have been a better idea if we had used like the bubble glass, but I don't care. I kind of like how this glass looks with this exhibit. Kind of makes it look a little bit more reinforced, you know? Okay, I'm going to add in some blue hydrangeas. Okay. Just a few blue hydrangeas, and then I'm going to go out. And let's put some river cane right there and right here. There we go. Okay, let's go out and... I guess find, well not find, but yes find. Do I have shears on me? I hope so, yes I do. So I wanna add some of this, some common duckweed to the water. And then possibly also one of the water hyacinth. I hope I said that right. But yes, guests in the zoo will be asked to please stay 
on the path. However, people tending to the animals, I won't really care. I think that'll look good. Okay. Let's head back to the house, grab a few um, plants as decor. That is poison ivy. I am honestly surprised I have not ran over that. I was so close to landing on that plant. Okay, let's just shove all our tools in such a way. Okay. Any plants that go on to... Um, We could add some shove, uh, yeah, some shoestring. Some devil shoestring. I don't think those go onto um, sand, though. Pretty sure they don't. I know that prairie grass doesn't. Hmm. I don't think I have any plants that go onto sand. I really have no idea. I can take the oak leaves so we can finish that ex the fox exhibit thing. The fence a little bit. We could do some lavender in there. Maybe some fountain grass. Because they also like shrublands, so. Yeah. Do I have any particularly sandy areas near me? It does not look like it. There's Icebird's area. Right? That's Icebird's area? I think so. Yes, that is. Ooh, but where's Megan's area? I think it's somewhere in this direction, but I don't know. We'll have to figure out- we have to go on a plant collecting expedition. Just go just to collect plants go with an empty, or relatively empty backpack. So we won't be able to finish the fence. <laughs> That's okay, though. Alright. Let's really quickly go place these plants, and then we run home and prepare materials for the roof and get some glass smelted. And also bring the carpenter's door thing. Maybe some fountain grass probably right here, right here. Okay, I want torches because I want a little bit of light in here. There we go. Perhaps one there, some lavender maybe right there, and here. And I think a few plants heading down into here. I'm going to light this area up a little bit as well. Just so we don't have to worry about monsters in the exhibit. And now we run home. <laughs> I'm going to put the glass on to smelt. Or the sand on to smelt in the glass. Okay, I did not ruin my plants. Yay. I really like how the exhibit is coming along, though. I think it's coming along pretty well. Pretty nicely. What do I want the roof to be? I need two carpenter's doors. Or garage doors. Carpenter's garage doors. I need... Um, I'm not sure. I need a sign, I know that. Let's see. I'm probably gonna use the oak wood. And probably I'm gonna turn it into stairs and into slabs. And keep a few blocks just in case. Okay, 
quite a few stairs there. Quite a few slabs. Okay. Let's head back. Ooh, more dog food. <laughs> I want to try to get it so that way all my dogs can eat rotten flesh. Because I feel like that would be so helpful if they could. I forgot the glass. <laughs> Whoops. Um, that is a creeper. That is not something we want to play with. But I do need your gunpowder. No gunpowder. Okay. Darn. Okay. Let's eat the cornbread. And I think once this cornbread is done, we'll call it a day. It's already 30 minutes in. Okay, glass becomes glass panes. And then we get out the carpenter's, or carpenter's chisel. The chisel, not carpenter's chisel, the chisel chisel. Okay, now we run. And then I think in between episodes, at some point, I don't know between which episodes, but in between some episodes, I will be adding in um, a zookeeper for for this exhibit. Okay, let's place the carpenter's garage doors. And then we can uh, place... Oops, I gotta break that. I want the maple diamond pickaxe. I need to find more maple diamond so I can repair this thing. But anyway, we can go in. Let me grab some dirt just so I can pile up here. Actually, I'm going to do it along the shorter side. I need an axe. possible to chisel us now? Okay. Good to know. I want a kind of slightly sloped roof. Like, I don't want it super sloped, but I also don't I don't want it super flat either. Two out. Two out. Slowly but surely making my way. Oops. Only want it up one. There we go. And then we gotta do the same thing on this side. Eee. Forgot to let go of space there. Really? Oh, perfect. Let me just break this too. I think I need to light up um, my female rock, my female rock snakes exhibit, just because I think it looked a little bit dark when we were there. Ooh, and then I think I want the cobblestone tiles along here. Probably along here, too. Okay, and then we can do this. And these slabs.
There we go. Okay. <sighs> Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay. I think that looks pretty nice. Um, alrighty. Now what to do? I think I'm just going to do slabs here. I don't think I have enough slabs. This is fine. <laughs> but anyways, that allows us to come down here and check out the how it looks. I think that'll look good. Okay. I might want to add some more glass there. So let's go and grab, or let's go and turn some more of the planks into stairs and slabs, and then we can go from there. I'm trying to fig, I'm figuring out a way to make it so that way I can do custom skins on the custom NPCs. So I think that would be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, probably. Yeah, I think twenty should work. There we go. More than enough. I think how I want to do, um, how I want to work on the zoo is have one episode be focused solely on building an exhibit, and then, uh, and then ha probably have like an episode in between that's more focused on, you know. Some other projects I want to do that don't exactly pertain to zoo life. That are more like, let's build the chocobo pen. Let's breed some chocobo. Let's work on the garden. Let's do a bit of cooking. You know, that kind of stuff. Okay, let me build up. I do want to add some glass here, because I think it would look really good with the glass. No! There is a very loud plane. Okay. One, two, one, two. I'm pretty sure that's Megan being back home. Ember. Ember! So growly you are. And then on the back I'm not gonna have like a... Glass panes or anything. Okay. Now we head down and see how that looks. I'm pretty sure it looks okay, at least. I want to take my time on the builds. That's the thing. I like how that looks. I really do. And then the exhibit itself looks nice. Okay, I think the exhibit is ready. I think it's ready to add in the Cape Cobra. We put the snake egg here. <gasps> no! Don't fall in the water! Don't fall in the water! There we go. I saved the snake egg. Hi, Megan. Welcome back. How was it? Give me a name for a snake. Slither? Okay. Slither. Okay. So we've got Slither the snake. I just realized it's like a greenish red. Okay. Yeah. How much do I feed them? Of each food? Okay. Cape Cobra. Do not enter. Exhibit. Danger. <laughs> Do not enter exhibit. There we go. So yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you all enjoy, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye, everyone!
The winds are blowing. Exactly, Red Ribbon.